Welcome to our service of morning prayer in the Oak Centre in Dunboyne. I'm not going to go through everything that I've already gone through this morning, so let's begin. The Lord be with you. Amen. Beloved in Christ, we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the whole world and to pray that in the power of his Spirit we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. <clears throat> Let us confess our sins to God our Father, and we say together, Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 The responses. O Lord, open our lips. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As was the beginning, and shall shine forever. Praise the Lord. The Lord Great is thy faithfulness, as sung by Harriet Wilkinson this morning. Our first canticle this morning is the Jubilate, and we say this together. O oh, shout to the Lord in triumph, all the earth. 
and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good, his loving mercy is forever, his faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Hilda will now read from the book Exodus. First reading this morning is from the book of Exodus, chapter 12, beginning at verse 1. It's the, the institution of the first Passover. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbour in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old may. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the house in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its head, legs and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins guarded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every false firstborn in the land of Egypt both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. The blood shall be assigned for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generation, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 149, and we're going to pray the psalm together. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new psalm, his praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel be glad in its Maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their King. Let them praise His name with dancing, making melody to Him with tambourine and lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in His people. He adorns the humble with victory. Let the faithful exalt in glory. Let them sing for joy on their couches. Let the high praises of God be in their throats and two-edged swords in their hands, to execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples, to bind their kings with fetters and their nobles with chains of iron, to execute on them the judgment decreed. This is glory for all his faithful ones. Praise the Lord. Our second reading from Romans.
Romans chapter 13, beginning at verse 8. Love for one another. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word, love your neighbour as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbour, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armour of light. Let us live honourably as in the day, not in revelling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarrelling and je jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. This week is a very special week for our young people the length and breadth of the country because they're going to get their leaving cert results. They need our prayers, they need our inspiration today more than ever and this week more than ever. So let's just take a moment out to be with them in spirit, to be with God and ask him to calm the nerves, to settle the tummies and to let them know that no matter what the results are, they are valued and loved by him above all else. So let's take a moment. Our third reading today is from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 18, beginning at verse 15. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our third canticle this morning is the Benedictus. And we say this together this morning. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. The Lord has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through the holy prophets, 
God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of those who hate us, to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hand of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous before him all the days of our lives. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. In one of my blogs during the week, I was talking about musicians and dancers and actors and everybody in the creative arts that have found themselves unemployed through no fault of their own because of COVID-19 and all of the venues, all of the places that they would have performed are closed as we speak. And that group there is a group of people from New York City who are all unemployed now. They're dancers and actors and musicians, as you can see, and singers. And they just have to get out and sing. And we are all chaffing at the bit. I can just feel it behind the masks to sing in some shape or form. So you can't do it in here. But as you're getting into your cars on the way out, okay, you can let out a couple of songs or a couple of notes and that would be just lovely because I can't wait for us all to sing together. It really is fundamental to how we all worship and how we bring joy to the world and to ourselves. And joy to the world. That reading today from Matthew's Gospel is about conflict. It's about when things go wrong. He's talking about a church situation. And what Jesus is really saying is that there's no situation that can't be resolved in some shape or form. That there are ways that you can actually do it. 75 years ago this month, the war in Japan finished. And the treaty was signed in the Bay of Japan with Douglas MacArthur being one of the signatories 75 years ago, people were shell-shocked. They were afraid. They were exhausted. The world had never seen such a calamity. In Russia alone, between 25 and 30 million people perished in the Second World War. We had never known anything before or ever since quite like it. And since that time, there have been many other conflicts around the globe. In fact, today, there's still wars all over the place, in Yemen, amongst others, where people are dying because of conflict, needlessly. That is not what God wants. It's not what Jesus wanted 2,000 years ago. It's not what he wants for us today. It's not what he wants for our future. At the heart of all of these conflicts can be fundamentalism, can be seeing that the other, the people that you are fighting, are not worthy of life. It can be ideology, it can be thinking that I am perfect, I'm right, and you are wrong. Now we might say that those kind of feelings wouldn't happen today. But back in the early 1930s, it happened drip by drip, word by word, and law by law. You see, back in the 1920s, at the start of the Depression in 29, nobody would have thought that there was in place something that would actually end up in Auschwitz-Birkenau. But it did. 
It started not only with Hitler coming to power, but it started with new laws being brought in, by people being ostracised, by people losing their employment, not because of a virus, but because of who they were, because they weren't of the religion that everybody else would profess. They were a different ethnicity. That wasn't their fault, that's who they are. And they shouldn't have to do or say or apologize for that. But little by little, laws were brought in. So to the point where we came to the start of the Second World War in 1939, it was very easy to corral people like that and for nobody to say anything. People knew in their hearts and soul, because when you take millions of people out of context or out of a society and ghettoise them, they have to be missing. There are plenty of witnesses out there that would say, yes, you know, I, no, the Jews, yeah, they deserve what they got. They deserve not to live amongst us. But our Jewish doctor and his wife and kids, they're okay. We have a Jewish friend, but I haven't seen them in two years. And nobody asked what happened, where did they go to? Human rights are abused little by little and drop by drop. And that's at the source, that's where conflict can actually lead us. When people see somebody else with a different coloured skin, with a different religion, a different political outlook, a different gender, and see them as less than ourselves, that is at the core of human conflict. And that's where it can lead us. Goethe wrote 200 years ago that where people burn books, eventually they will burn people. He would never in his wildest dreams have imagined that something like Auschwitz-Birkenau would have happened. But it did. In Kristallnacht, they burnt books and they burnt, them, or they burnt them for years beforehand as well in Nazi Germany. They were cleansing themselves of Jewish writers, of Jewish musicians, of Jewish actors and singers and those in the arts. They were pretending that they didn't exist. Little by little, they were ostracized until there were no more. Where fundamentalism, where ideology, where plain pig-headedness and badness brings us is to a situation like 1945, where people are exhausted, where people don't know how this happened. When a concentration camp in Belsen, Bergen, Bergen-Belsen was opened and the British soldiers went in there, they never thought in their wildest dreams that humans could do this to fellow humans. When we forget or blithely ignore the fact that in everybody else, God's likeness is too, just as he is in us. When we forget that and ignore that, situations like Bergen-Belsen and Auschwitz and Nanking and the so many atrocities since then can happen. We are all made in God's likeness. We are all loved individually and collectively by God. And when we have a situation where conflict arises, Jesus has given us a pathway that we can follow because we can follow a way of love. We can follow that even though we may not agree with somebody, they are still made in God's likeness and they deserve our respect, they deserve our love. When we forget that we are all 
black, brown, rich, poor, Protestant, Catholic, Jewish, Muslim, whatever. We are all made in God's image and loved by him. Conflict will be the natural outcome of all of that. Jesus is showing us a way forward. It's a way forward that people down through the centuries have followed and not as well. And unfortunately it will be for that for the years to come. But we have a duty as men and women here today, either in present or virtually on the internet, to do what we can to lessen conflict in our lives, in our communities and in our churches. And in that way, we are adding to God's kingdom on earth. We are following Jesus Christ and what he taught us. That we love one another as he has loved and loves us. We affirm our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit by saying the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. O Lord, guide and defend our rulers. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness. O Lord, save your people. Give peace in our time, O Lord. O God, make clean our hearts within us. Our intercessory prayers. Heavenly Father, we remember churches, societies, groups, communities, households, where conflict is at this time. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit to those in authority, those who have the ways and means of making peace. Because to follow the pathway of Jesus Christ is to bring peace, is to be a light in the darkness, is to show people that there is a better way of living. Conflict doesn't have to be the answer. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. we remember our young people today, those who will soon be getting their leaving certificate results this week. May God bless them. May he calm their fears and the fears of their parents and those who love them. Whether they get the results that they want, you love them. 
You see them as the apple of your eye. They are all precious in your sight. And for each and every one of us, you have a pathway that you will guide us upon. Our young people are so much more than just results. They are flesh and blood. They are full of hope and they can be easily hurt. We ask you, God, to calm them and to be with them this week. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. Hear us. We thank you, God, for all of those in our local communities who have done so much over the last six months to be your hands and feet in this earth, who have brought dinners and newspapers and messages to those who are self-isolating, those who picked up the telephone and just made a call just to see how somebody is, those who metaphorically put an arm around people who are grieving, who are lonely, and feel that this will never pass. Jesus, you have taught us that in all things pass, because you will be with us through it all. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. Hear us. we remember in our prayers this morning those who are sick, those who are terminally ill, those whose earthly life is coming to an end. We thank you, God, for the gift of their presence in the lives of all those who have known them. We ask you, God, to welcome them with your angels into your heaven, where they might be with our loved ones who have died before us, and where we, in our turn, will join them and join you in heavenly songs of praise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. And we wrap up our prayers by saying, Merciful Father, accept these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Collects at Morning Prayer. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you as eternal life and to serve you as perfect freedom, defend us in all. May not fear the power of any adversaries. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and ever living God, we give you thanks for bringing us safely to this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger. And in all things, guide us to know and do your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Go before us, Lord, in all our doings, with your most gracious favour, and further us by your continual help, that in all our works begun, continued, and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name, and finally, by your mercy, attain everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, in whom we live and move and have our being, we humbly pray that your Holy Spirit may so guide and govern us, that in all the cares and occupations of our daily life, we may never forget your presence but may remember that we are always walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Before the final dismissal and blessing, I would like to thank everybody here and everybody watching this on YouTube or Facebook for stopping by and being part of our worship and praise and thanksgiving today. Just a reminder that we will be here in the Oak Centre in Dunboyne next Sunday and also in St Mary's in Maynooth and both services will be at 11am. The dismissal and blessing. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thank you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ 
and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Amen. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.